play my alarm? Oh, yes! That looks clean. <laughs> we look good. Yeah, that looks great. Clean and fresh. Trez, what do you think? Clean and fresh. <laughs> Because the Lucifer says non servium. I'll try not to take it personally that you're pointing <laughs> at me when you said Lucifer. <laughs> You guys, we're back. I'm excited to introduce you to my friend, Ryan. Do you wanna tell us a little bit about you? Yeah, so my name is Ryan Ayala. I'm married, I have three kids, and I work at a parish in Scottsdale, and I'm the director of marriage and family life. Fun fact, if you come on a Blessed Is She retreat, you'll probably get to meet Ryan because he works at the parish that we host. Thanks for doing that. You're welcome. <laughs> now we called Ryan here for a specific reason today, and that is to talk about... Saint Jose Maria Escriva. Yeah. I would have done a video on him, but i he's one of those people where I feel like if he knew me in real life, he wouldn't really like me, <laughs> so I'm kind of insecure about it. So we brought Ryan in, because I feel like you and Jose Maria, you definitely, you're on the same vibe. We're on the vibe tribe, yeah. We are. yeah. I'm on the, I can't stop hitting my snooze button vibe, yeah. so I, I'm working my way up. For those of you who don't know, Jose Maria Escriva has this big thing about getting up on your first alarm, saying a prayer, offering that first little sacrifice of the day to the Lord. And, you know, I'm asking him to sanctify me, and someday <laughs> I would love to give up my snooze button. What does he call that? The heroic minute? The heroic minute, that's right. He's not big on the snooze button. Yeah, so the heroic minute for St. Jose Maria Escriva was really an opportunity for us to win the first minute of the mm. day. And so how we do that is by avoiding pressing the snooze button because for Father Escriva, when we, the moment we press the snooze button is the moment we we have given into laziness, kind of the, mm. the first skirmish of the day. We, we've lost that, that first battle. And so he really encourages his students to wake up on the dot and to say servium, which is the phrase St. Michael would say, which means I, I will serve. Because Lucifer says non servium, which means I will not serve. So again, it's really beginning the day by giving it all to God. I love it. Does St. Michael wake up? <laughs> Does St. Michael have an alarm? No, I love that. I love that. I was reading before you came. I'm like, you know, this guy's so quotable. I gotta like pick out my favorite quotes for this video. Yes. And one of them he's talking about just getting up and like starting the day like immediately with a joyful heart. Yeah. I'm like, you are asking a lot of me. No <laughs> snooze button and start the day joyfully. Yeah. Got a lot of work to do. What I love about St. Jose Maria Escriva was really, he was convicted of what we call like divine filiation or really mm -hmm. what it means to be a son or daughter of the father. Yeah. And so he really believed that. And so he talks about like something remarkable happens in baptism. In baptism, we don't just become a son or daughter next to a son, but we actually become a son or daughter in the son. So we're actually grafted wow. onto Christ. Wow. And it is through that that we participate in the redeeming act of Christ, which means that we get to help Christ bring all things to him, specifically our work. He was big on that. He was huge on that. Yeah. In fact, San Jose Maria Escriva is known for being the one who really popularized the phrase of universal call to holiness. Mm -hmm. um, it was actually him who was a forerunner. I mean, he was present at the Second Vatican Council and really inspired the paragraph in Gaudium et Spes, which talks about sanctity is not just reserved for a few, but reserved for all. And therefore, universal, universally, everyone's called to be holy. So it was San Jose Maria Escriva who really popularized that and actually made that part of the teaching of the church. The OG. The OG, San Jose Maria Escriva. Yeah, one of the things that he recommends in terms of really kind of developing one's spiritual life is to have a plan of life. Mm -hmm. And a plan of life, he has recommendations that he actually encourages for his students. He really wants to encourage you and I to develop our own plan of life and stick to it. That's like the key thing for Father Escriba is to stick to your plan of life. So if that means not hitting the snooze button, that is your plan of life for that morning, but sticking to that. Or maybe even reading five minutes of the gospel for the day, or maybe reading 10 minutes of a spiritual reading for the day. Mm -hmm. Whatever you're able to do in your particular circumstances, he definitely wants to encourage you to do that. I love how focused he is on like the practicalities of life. Like he really encourages, yes. I think it's JP2 who called him like the saint of ordinary life. Yes. Because he's like all about like wherever you're at, like the sanctification of work, like what you're doing in this moment, where you are, you should do it well and do it as a son or daughter of God. Yes. Mm -hmm. And again, it goes back to the idea of when we are baptized, we are essentially helping Christ redeem the world. Now we don't add anything to redemption, only Christ alone mm -hmm. does that, 
but we get to participate in it and draw all things to him. Specifically through work, what's amazing is that through our work, we're able to not only sanctify it itself, we're not only able to sanctify ourselves through mm -hmm. the work, but we're able to sanctify others through the work. But that requires a few things. It requires a disposition of love. You mm -hmm. have to be willing to uh, work with love. It also requires really a pursuit of perfection. Not that you have to be perfect, but you have to be perfectly trying to perform well or do your work well. Mm -hmm. And I would say the last thing with regard to work is that St. Jose Maria Scriva had a very universal understanding of work. So mm -hmm. of course he meant the nine to five, yeah. but he really was talking about anything that you can do to offer to the Lord. So if you're a student, you would offer your, your time of study. You know, St. Dominic has that famous phrase where he says, the wood of the cross is the wood of the desk, right? And so St. Jose Maria Scriva understood for students, if you're a student, that's a great way to offer the time, the effort, the energy that takes you to focus and offering it to the Lord. If you're a mom, a stay-at-home mom, or or if you're a working mom and you're trying to kind of balance family life and your own prayer life and your own you know health and your own private time and, and your own relationship with your husband like all that requires in that he encourages you to offer that with the Lord or if you're just like a scientist or a yeah. lawyer he wants to encourage you whatever state of life you're in to offer it completely to the Lord and so and it is through that that you and I get to work out our salvation yeah I think it's so tempting to always look at holiness as like something we're gonna do later or when I reach mm -hmm. like this state in my life when I'm out of high school when I'm out of college when I get married like then I can see all these practical ways that I can be holy when I'm living in my vocation But I love how insistent he is on like holiness is now holiness Like you have so many opportunities just like in your daily life when you wake up when you go to your nine to five When you go home whether it's to your family to your roommates by yourself Like we have so many opportunities in everyday life to be sanctified. Yeah, amen. Amen. That was it If you could summarize uh, father Scriva's sort of teaching and um, passion, it was exactly that, is sanctify the moment now. Don't put off later, sanctify today. Holiness in the ordinary. What Holiness in the ordinary, yep. Ryan, do you have a favorite quote? Yes, you know what, I do. By the way, if you ever want to get into Father St. Jose Maria Escriva's um, teachings or kind of wisdom, yeah. I really encourage you to buy a book called The Way, The Furrow, The Forge. And it's a one Is that of, one book? It's one book. Or is it multiple it's books? It's three books in one. Three books in one. Three books in one. You guys, one. Wow. three books in one. And it has amazing oh, it aspirations and quotes. One of his famous ones was, don't say that person bothers me, say that person sanctifies me, right? Or Estovir, that's another popular one. You ever heard of the word mm -hmm. Estovir? Or Nuke Chepi, now I begin. Shout out. <laughs> Belle, her husband, right? They did that. Shout out to you guys. This is <laughs> not a commercial this for the Blessed Machine. <laughs> <laughs> Nuke Chepi, now I begin. I just read one yesterday where he would before he would start his work before he would begin like preparing for a class he would say to the lord you and i together lord mm, you know and that was wow. it wow is that wow. beautiful is that delightful i just love like, that just you and i together like sometimes we just have to begin our day with you and i lord you know yeah and we invite the lord into this moment yeah another thing i love is he described like young people as in like a battle of formation mm -hmm. and i feel like that's so true especially like with the culture and the world like there are so many things that can form us whether that be like our families our schools our friends whatever what we listen to what we take in what we consume but what he really tried to do through his work and emphasizing this holiness in everyday life is to form people to form up people for the Lord for the gospel to be rooted like in this truth so they're not so susceptible to the culture or to different ways of life but they're rooted like in the truth and in the Lord yeah it's funny you say that because <laughs> An image that he would actually use often, he actually uses this this image of the donkey. He actually has a, mm. has a, has a theology oh, yeah. called the theology of the donkey. And basically, oh. um, and so he actually encourages, by the way, if you own a donkey, he really encourages you to put it on your desk, put it somewhere where you can kind of reference to throughout the day. I thought you meant like a real donkey. <laughs> <laughs> if you own a real donkey, email us. The donkey does not concern himself with things that he cannot control. Wow. Right? The donkey is, is stubborn, he's humble, but he's also present. He does not try to do things that he cannot do. And so St. Jose Maria Escriva says that the donkey in the life of the church actually has a very wonderful symbol as it was the animal that Christ rode into Jerusalem in the last days of his death. And so the donkey is kind of a model for what it means to be present in the moment mm. and to allow ourselves to really accept the fact that you can only control what you can control. You can't yeah. control outside of that. So um, yeah, that, that donkey was a really powerful image for us. I love Maria that. Yeah. Therese, could you get us a donkey for our desk? <laughs> <laughs>
Kelsey, what is your favorite St. Jose Maria Escriba quote? Hmm, if I had to choose, because he's a very quotable guy, I'd say, I really like the one where he says, you and I are called to be rebels, but the kind of rebels that wow. give solutions. <laughs> Christian solutions. Yes, amen. <laughs> amen, Father Escriba. Let's be rebels. <laughs> well, Ryan, thanks for coming by. Thanks for having me. Thanks for sharing your absolutely fire wisdom. Thank you, Brad. Premium gas, as they would call it. <laughs> St. Jose Maria Escriva. Pray for us. See you next time.